I feel this amazing bond with the land and with this place and to use the land where I was born and grew up to make food and then to be able to just get that in people's kitchens feels like the most amazing art project. Our farm stand works on the honor system. And the, the way that works is we just put our crops out to market. The biggest challenge for a farmer is really how do you sell your crops? And I wanted to try to find the easiest way to sell crops. They use their, the scale, figure out what the squash weighs, and then they write it down. And we have all of these notebooks full of people's tallies. And then they put the money right in here in this box. And in the end of my day, I am the lucky guy get to open up the box and collect all of the money. And so the way the, the farm stand works is really beautiful is that all we have to do is just keep restocking it. I wasn't really it, desiring to like necessarily make a lot of money farming and not be wasting a bunch of time and gas driving things around. So I thought, even if I don't make a lot of money, I'll just put it, do, try to figure out a way to make, uh, sell our produce by not leaving the farm. So that means bringing people to the farm to pick it up. Uh, my farm is the place that I was born. I was roaming around on bikes and pretending and just enjoying the wild landscape. The natural continuation was for him to come back home, but it goes back generations too, you know, it's the vision of his grandparents who had the foresight to buy a farm as, an, as a place for, in that case, it was as a place for his grandmother to have somewhere to paint. The story goes, his grandmother would like hop fences and be trespassing to go find landscapes to paint. and. He's like, we gotta buy you a place so you have somewhere to paint, you know, it's very romantic. What Mickey has turned the farm into compared to how his, his dad ran it differently. His dad was had his tractor business and the crabbing and then he did wholesale vegetables. And then when Mickey took it on, it kind of became maybe more of an art project in terms of the diversity and the layers and the, you know, you could even look at it in like colors and textures. Being able to be a young farmer and piggyback on an older farmer that's kind of ready to let it go, I think is a really important thing. It'd be hard to do that without other farmers around. You know, you can put a lot of energy into a farm like my dad did, and it doesn't really pan out in with the perfection that one would hope. But I was really headstrong in the beginning that I didn't want to wholesale produce, which is how my dad, when he ran the farm, he used to do a lot of wholesaling, and I kind of wanted to separate my mission from what he had spent his farming career doing. For me to take on the farming project as my sole enterprise, he gets to see his farm really have a new birth. Mothership Vintage is a sort of a project that was first started when I made a sculpture um, it was not intended to be a vintage shop in the beginning, it was intended to be a mobile kitchen. I, when I was growing up, was just totally covered in stinging nettles and willows, and it was so covered in brush that we couldn't even get to it to make a fort, because we were always making forts. So I pulled this lifeboat out of the bushes, and I uh, cleaned out all of the leaves and cut out the rotten bottom of this metal boat. It was really, really rusted. It was a kind of practice of pulling things out of the bushes and then welding them together into this um, funny but whimsical um, mobile unit that then we hauled into Bolinas to sell vegetables. Kind of eventually just was sitting in the bushes. We pulled it over to the metal shop, pulled out the old kitchen, and then Mickey built some racks out of old fence posts. And then I already had pretty much a, quite a collection going already of secondhand and old clothing. And then we have these art shows and um, so I, my role is to curate that space, the art space, and to um, manage the sort of interpersonal with the artists and organize the, the openings. And we have a lot of uh, live music shows too, so I um, organize those. The access to the place is everything, you know, and I think that's what people don't have. And that's what's so heartening about the farm scene because they feel like they have access to it because 
of the way Mickey's funneling it out into the community. Well, yeah, this is like a community blue spot, I always think of it as. Uh, like if it was just a farm stand, that would be one thing. But if it was, now that it has like the, you know, this art space and the vintage shop, that it ends up being a meeting spot. I think that's what feels so good to the humans, you know, is that they're part of this beautiful entity and it wouldn't exist without the customers. It's, it's this passion of growing and harvesting food and ending up in one spot. And the more beautiful things you put in that spot, the more of a community space it becomes. My career, which started as an art career, turned into the career of a producer because I wanted to make art, but then I realized, you know, art that someone puts on their wall doesn't really do them much good, actually. You know, that's really not that great for society. Um, not as good as making art that, say, invigorates someone's kitchen. And then suddenly, that family that lives in that house, they bought my art for $2. It's a bunch of chard and that that's more beautiful than making some amazing painting.